Ring-a-ding-ding. That's the bell if you didn't get it. Welcome, Rotarians and guests, to the Rochester Rotary December 8th virtual meeting. Hopefully someday we're going to get back to live. My name is Ron Lichtel. I serve as your club president. Would you please stand and join me in Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States of America, America. and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, Virginia justice for all. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Normally we would have Paulus playing the piano and we would we would do our singing a little bit, but uh, we're not able to do that right now. So join me in the four-way test of the things we think, we think say, or do. Is, is it the truth? truth? Is it fair to all concerns? Will it build goodwill? Will it be beneficial to all concerns? Ms. Janet Drobnich. Right here. Would you give us today's invocation, please? I will be happy to. Let us bow our heads. As we meet today as members and guests, let us enjoy the many offerings of Rotary. May we follow the rules that we have established, those of trust, fellowship, and ethics. And we, may we place service above self every day. And may we test ourselves and our efforts to be sure that they are the truth, good for all concerned, and promote peace and understanding in the world. Amen. Amen. One last little prayer out to Jeff Dupron, who is still in the hospital. Anybody gets an update, please forward it so that I can announce it. Okay, guess. If, if you are a guest with us today, please put it in the Zoom so that uh, Zoom chat so Stuart Signer can get some information to you. And uh, Stuart Signer is here today. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> he keeps telling, Ron, please send it to me. I didn't get it again. I'm getting a complex here. Nobody wants, I'm feeling like nobody wants me around. I can't get an email to save my life. Oh, and I didn't hear back from uh, Club Runner. Yeah, no worries. I just keep bothering Ron. I like doing that. Yeah, I know. I think am he's I the only one that's hard, having trouble getting on Zoom. No, I am, sir. Well, <laughs> yeah, what do you mean, today or or all the time? Uh, mostly today. I I, I think uh, you know he keeps not being able to get on, so I think the government's blocking him. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You said I'm part of the Taliban. That's nice. <laughs> Mark Tisdale won't be with us today as he has a, a new legislator training Zoom meeting. Our legislator, that is awesome. Uh, <laughs> subbing for Jeff Whitby, who is introducing our guest today? Nobody. <laughs> nice. Well, if you are a guest, please put it in the Zoom so Stuart can uh, get with you and, and we can also welcome you. I don't see any in there. Nothing in there, okay. Somebody just put me on the, uh, <laughs> trying to get back to the, there we go. Uh, who was our 15th sign on today there, uh, Mr. Stu? No, Phil, you were not, forget it. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna be Phil. Uh, let's see here. How do we want to pick? I want to pick Dave Erdley. Dave Erdley was a 15th. Okay. That's Thank you I'm, very that's much. What I'm thinking. <clears throat> that's the truth. So, that's Phil, you just hush. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> uh, happy Bucks. We got any Happy Bucks out there? I know David, he, he gave one for about 20 minutes. So, anybody else? I have one. Linda. Great. Uh, I'm happy that poinsettia sales are behind us. <laughs> we did great. <laughs> it was a ton of work this year, <clears throat> more than ever. But um, I'm I'm still in a good mood about it, and I'm happy that uh, that we were able to do so well. 
Any other happy bucks out there? Dave, you, Dave Walker, you got to be happy. <laughs> I'm always happy. Is that going to cost me a buck? No, that's five bucks. <laughs> oh, five bucks. I'm happy. No, that's a buck. <laughs> and Mr. David Erdley, I, I think he's got he's got the timer. <laughs> I've got what, Ron? Some timers. That's what my wife tells oh. me I have. Yes, yes. My happy buck would be that. Ron, help me remember something. <laughs> All right. Moving on. If we don't have any more happy. Oh, wait a minute. Jay. I, I have the happiest of happy bucks. After three years, we've gotten our, our permit for our in imagination. All right. And we're going to start excavating within the next few days. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. That, that's been a long time coming. Yeah, it <laughs> certainly has. All right. Hey, hey Ron, Ron I, I typed out happy buck. You typed one out? Yeah. Very you know how to, first, you know how to uh, type? Well, <laughs> <laughs> they teach that at, uh, that, oh, at the, the Ohio State University. Well, I'm voting for our hardball for, for life. Oh, okay. <laughs> and from Kyle, he says, sure Glad you David. Uh, Jerry Gross checking in on Zoom. Tom Navo is here. Annette Werner's here. Julian is here. Thank you for the great prayer, Janet. That was from David Erdley. Do you want us to check in like that for attendance purposes? Does it help? Who was the one taking attendance today? You. <laughs> I thought it was, no, I thought it was Kyle. I was muted. Yeah, I'm taking attendance. And no, as long as your name is correctly in the participants tab, I can write it down. Okay. So yeah. yeah. So so Tom, who's here as Fred, is going to be absent. <laughs> no, I I haven't logged as Fred. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Birthdays. Joe Allen, December 9th. Bob Lytle, December 12th, and Tim Crawford on December 14th. Well, good. Sing happy birthday to these Rotarians. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Rotarians. Happy birthday to you. But our hours, please. Of anniversaries, Dick Gorgeous, 13 years, and Peter Strumeyer, or Stubreyer, it says 14 years. Has he been with us that long? That's a lie. That was in the, it, it's in the, basically in the, in our records. He came and went and came. Yeah, he came back. and went, unless he was. I thought I just saw him in the last few months. <laughs> Maybe it's 14 months. <laughs> anyway, congratulations, Peter, for being with us. Club announcements. Is Steve Ehler with us today? Yes, he is. Let me let me hear something about those poinsettia sales. Well, we had a pretty good year with poinsettias there, team. Pretty good year. That was outstanding. Huge thank you to everybody. Um, we had some barcode sales from Bordines. Our members and friends of members purchased $1,363.66 worth of stuff which earned us $136.37 of barcode money. So we almost made $17,500. So awesome. all time record, way to go team. That was awesome. Rotarian of the week. Last week, Ray Dower gave it to Hap Walton. So Hap, who are you gonna give that to this week? Are you there Hap? Yeah, I unmuted myself. No. Okay. Uh, I was thinking about uh, various people, and uh, I finally settled on Stuart Signer. <laughs> Stuart, congratulations. 
right. Maybe he's not the Taliban after all. All right. This week, our sheriff is the sheriff, Mr. Steve Shettenham. Well, hi, gang. Um, thank you for that great introduction. Um, you know, a lot of things out there. Uh, David Archibald, those of you that missed the, uh, the pre-meeting uh, today, um, all the information that you would ever want to know about COVID was uh, discussed by David Archibald. Good to see that he's uh, back. Uh, he did talk a lot about the fact that he had the same medicine that the president did. Uh, I noticed he hasn't taken his hat off, so I'm a little bit concerned about what his hair looks like now. Um, you know, not sure if it's all tucked up underneath there or, or what, because that's got to be some uh, symptom of something. Uh, also, a good thing that any of you people that get COVID, apparently it will make you on time uh, since David was here early. So uh, that's a, it's a plus too. So we're we appreciated that, uh, that after a fact. Uh, so, you know, we've been pretty lucky. It's it's December. We really haven't had any snow to speak of. So if you're happy about that, that's a $5 fine. Uh, if you're a winter sports person and you're sad about it, that's also a $5 fine. And if you're one of those snowplow guys who's happy that he's not charging by the push, but for the season, Ron, uh, that's a $5 fine. Um, if you still happen to be eating turkey from Thanksgiving, uh, please stop. Uh, that should be thrown out. Um, we don't want to see any more of that. If you haven't ordered carryout from a downtown restaurant, that's a $5 fine. If you've braved outdoor dining and you've had it uh, you know, out in the cold, or better yet, if you've had dinner in an igloo, which is the, the new thing for outdoor dining, uh, that's a $5 fine. And we appreciate your uh, helping out the restaurants. Or maybe we call it a tip in, in that case. Um, if you're still working on your Christmas decorations uh, outside, that's a $5 late to the party fine. That should, those should all be up. Um, but if you're leaving up uh, those on all night, our midnight shift appreciates the little Christmas cheer. So thanks for leaving those up for us. Um, if you, uh, let's see, if, today's speaker, I believe, is uh, Marilyn Trent. She's going to talk about the pollinators. So, um, if you've ever been stung by a bee, that's a $5 fine. If you've ever floated like a butterfly and stung like a bee, that's also a $5 fine. Um, here's a list of words that were uh, published about, uh, that have popped up in 2020, and we would prefer not to have to hear them again in uh, 2021. So it's $5 for any of these that you've used. COVID-19, obviously, uh, a lot of that. Cancel vacations, parties, or anything. Uh, virtual added to the word to anything. So virtual meetings, virtual parties, virtual, virtual, virtual. That's a five dollar fine. Murder hornets. If you've had any discussions about murder hornets, that's a five dollar fine. Nasal swabs. You know we did talk a little bit about that at the beginning of the meeting. Birthday car parades. You remember those uh, during the heat of uh, COVID? And uh, we've already heard it here today. Uh, the expression "you are on mute." So if you've uh, used that expression, that's a $5 fine. We, we could be rich today if we use that every time we've heard that. Uh, today in history, um, in 1987, the superpowers agreed to reduce nuclear arsenals. Um, no word yet on how the peace talks are going between Rochester and Rochester Hills. I uh, understand there's a, bird, bed, a little bit of a border skirmish going on there, but hopefully they get that resolved. Um, today in 1940, the NFL record was set for the largest margin of defeat. Um, the, uh, the team uh, won by a score of 73 to nothing. Believe it or not, it was not the Lions. Um, this was a, a match between the Bears and the Redskins uh, back in 1940. Uh, so if you did get a chance to celebrate a Lions win this weekend, that was a $5 fine. Uh, also in some holiday news, um, it's National Hand Washing Awareness Week. Um, so that certainly takes on new meaning uh, given the COVID situation. So please wash your hands, uh, wear your mask, um, and there's no fine for you people that are doing your part and doing both of those things. Remember, if you left your mask in the car, that's a $5 fine, but it will bump it back to 
$2 if you remember less than five steps away from the car and you go back again. Um, it's also Older Drivers Awareness Week. I'm not really sure how that works. Is that we're supposed to be more aware of the older drivers or they're supposed to be more aware of us? But let's just have everybody be aware when they're out there on the road. Uh, so if you're not aware, that's a $5 fine. Uh, today is National Day of Lard. Um, didn't know exactly how we're planning on celebrating that, but uh, if you haven't planned that into your menu, that's a $5 fine. And that leads us to the next day, uh, which today is National Toilet Paper Appreciation Day. So if you've had too much lard, perhaps that's how that got uh, started. I see uh, Phil is, uh, you know, really uh, rubbed up for today. Uh, so if you're running low on your toilet paper, you haven't hoarded enough, uh, so that you have you know, something to celebrate with, that's a $5 fine. All the fines for charity, and uh, we appreciate uh, everybody uh, paying attention and smiling and laughing on uh, Zoom. Carry on. Well, Steve, were, were you in particular pointing at anyone for old drivers or? No, I, I would choose not to. Uh, I'll take the fifth on that. Okay. And as far as National ETP Day, it's like, are you telling everyone that we're full of whatever? Well, I hope not. Uh, I just, you know, I want everyone to be prepared. So uh, make sure you haven't, you've got enough in supply at home. Home right. and away. Thanks a lot, Steve. I hope you raised a lot today. <laughs> All right, Mr. Tim Duncan. Yes, sir. All right, you want to introduce today's speaker? Sure. And I, I just saw that she just logged on, which is, which is great. So... I think we're ready. All right. Good afternoon, Rotarians. Uh, today, it is my pleasure to introduce Marilyn Trent. Marilyn has been committed to environmental causes in downtown Rochester since 2005, when she founded the Green City Committee of Rochester as a fifth committee of the Downtown Development Authority of Rochester. The committee was active until 2012. In 2019, she founded the Rochester Pollinators as a committee of the City Beautiful Commission, to help save the monarch butterfly and native pollinators in the region by restoring their natural habitats with native plants. Rochester Pollinators has participated in multiple events with its debut at Earth Day Fest in 2019 and has contributed over $3,000 to the butterfly pledge for the city of Rochester since its inception. She makes a living through her design agency, Trent Creative, with offices in Rochester and Detroit for over two decades. She has two grown daughters while acting as a catalyst for positive social and ecological change in her community. Her favorite title after mom is the Butterfly Lady. She has been on the Downtown Development Authority of Rochester since 2005 and is the chair of the Rochester Regional Chamber of Commerce for the upcoming year. She was also a proud member of Rotary from 2001 till 2004. Uh, please join me in welcoming Marilyn Trent. Well, hi, I recognize some familiar faces and thank you, Tim, for that nice introduction. Okay. Um, many of you some know about the Rochester Pollinators, so um, I don't know if all of you have seen my presentation. Cut me off at 20 minutes, I could go on forever <laughs> um, about this topic. And um, what I, I'd like to, to say thank you for having me back. I was a Rotarian um, in 2003 and four. I think that was mentioned. And um, then I went on to uh, I went on to other things and I miss everybody. So it's good to, to be back. Um, so uh, I am the founder of the Rochester Pollinators. And um, let's see how I, if I will move here. Eh, what happened? Now it just stopped. Um, hmm, let's do a little escape. I'm sharing my screen and it, oh, there you go. Um, and it was created to save the butterflies and pollinators by restoring um, their natural habitats. And what I found in 2019, I learned in January 2019 that the monarch butterfly was in a population decline of up to 90% depending on the year. And I wanted to do something. So I did my research and I found out that it was an ecologically solvable problem that we all can do in our own backyard, really in essence, is by planting Michigan uh, native plants. 
Um, it's also, I'd like to say that um, I had no idea when I started this that I would get as much uh, as, a, as good responses that I'd gotten, as much participation from all levels, from the government level to the business level to the um, residential level. To understand the reason I got involved is to understand the monarch butterfly and the migratory path. And the migratory path was not discovered until 1972. Well, if you think about it, it wasn't that long ago when they did not understand the, the monarch butterfly, the, then its fourth generation flew from Michigan and Northern states and Southern Canada to Mexico in the fall, they go, they travel 2,800 miles and that is what sets them apart from all other butterflies. And this is a, this is where they convene in Mexico. And um, it's a good relationship that we have with the Mexican, um, central Mexican government and um, some uh, nonprofits to try to save them because they go to the Oyamel Pines and they have to be at a certain um, elevation to survive. So I'm going to show you a little bit of this because it really gets to the heart of the matter. And I'll cut it off. I've got to time this presentation as well. A decade ago, when my family rode horses up the mountain in Michoacan, Mexico, to see the winter home of the monarch butterflies, we were greeted by an incredible sight. Tens of millions of monarchs sheltered from the winter cold and waiting to start their incredible migration. As the weather turned to spring, these monarchs would all fly north, but none of them would ever return. Instead, they'd lay eggs, and successive generations of monarchs would continue the full migration. The following fall, millions more monarchs, descendants of the butterflies all around us, would miraculously find their way back to this same spot, a cycle that has continued for untold centuries. Caught up in the wonder, we could never have imagined but just a decade later, North America's monarch population would have decreased by over 90%. Same meadow, 11 years later. Where did all the monarchs go? Now citizens and scientists alike are asking the same question. What can be done to save the monarchs? The decline in monarch populations was first attributed to illegal logging in the reserves. It's a huge problem but the local communities have partnered with environmental nonprofits from Mexico, from the US, from Canada. Reforestation efforts are bringing the forest back. More trees means more cover for the monarchs. Comunidades que son los dueños de los bosques han convertido ellos en los protectores directamente de sus bosques, porque se han dado cuenta que no solo para la conservación de la monarca sirven estos bosques, sino para su mantenimiento propio. Hi, we're at Crescencio Morales School with these great kids and their big tree nursery here and all the trees they're going to be planting out into the forest. And these kids are holding Oyamel firs, the trees the monarchs roost on in the winter. <laughs> I'm with Celia and this is her energy efficient stove uh, built with uh, our friends at Alternare who do workshops on building these stoves in all the communities near the forest. And uh, that reduces harvesting of wood in the forest. Te gusta? Sí. <laughs> The smaller numbers of monarchs in this area, they're more concentrated on fewer number of trees, so we have to go further up the mountain. So basically, that's how, that's where they uh, migrate every uh, fall, like I said. And then they will start the migratory path back up to the to back through the three generations to get up to Michigan. So the, what I'm showing you here is what happens when spring comes, the females 
will come to the southern United States and they'll lay their eggs. And what they're looking for is milkweed plants. And because there's been a decline in milkweed plants, it's the only plant that the uh, caterpillar uh, can survive on. Um, that is one of the reasons for the decline. So the female will, will um, die after it lays its eggs. The next generation will get to the mid United States. And then the last generation will then get to, to Michigan. And that's when you'll start seeing them in June or July. All we create are the, we don't really create, the, the last generation is, is um, created here. And it's the super butterfly and it has to live six to eight months. So that uh, is what we're basically trying to save is the migratory path of the monarch butterfly. And um, what I found is that people do, a lot of people do care about the butterfly, but more than that, I found out that we're losing 40% of our other pollinators. And may, you guys may remember when you drove up north or drove around, there would be insects on your windshields. And, you know, God forbid that I would miss insects, but I am starting to miss them now because I've learned about their, um, their benefits uh, for our, our life on planet Earth. Um, and um, there you go. So a little bit about the monarch butterfly. They lay their egg, and this is on a butterfly milkweed. They, um, over here, you'll see that they have, the caterpillar is born. It takes about a oh, few weeks for it to turn itself into a J and then it becomes a chrysalis and then seven to 10 days, it will emerge from a, um, from a, a, from a chrysalis. And it's absolutely a beautiful experience to, to see. You can see many, you can see it on any YouTube videos. It's just amazing. Um, like I mentioned, we lost 90%, up to 90% of the population of monarchs. 40% of our pollinators. And why is that important? Because a third of our food supply depends upon it. Well, if you, I mean, if you don't care about them, maybe you do care about avocados, cherries, tequila, coffee, wine, apple pie, lemonade, raspberries, tomatoes, and almonds, and much more. So what are our pollinators? Well, our Michigan pollinators, here's six popular ones, the hummingbird, the butterflies, the ladybug, the native bees, they don't bite if, unless you start picking them up and start smishing them around. They don't find that very particularly in, in enhancing to their life. We also have, there's bats, dragonflies, um, flying ants, excuse me, and um, many others, uh, many others. There's many types of pollinators. But what do they live on? Um, well, they live on native plants. And um, we have experienced a habitat loss of over 40 million acres that have been altered. Um, pesticides and herbicides have been introduced into our environment and then new diseases. It's an ecologically solvable problem. You can do it in your own backyard and it's easy. You plant Michigan native plants. I had never, heard, I didn't know what they were a couple of years ago. Uh, and they're beautiful. They're not weeds. They can add beauty and habitat and food and bi biodiversity. We're not saying throw out all your uh, annuals and um, all your plants that you love. We're saying integrate that in. Think about your na natural environment. Uh, feed your local pollinators. Um, that feeds our birds in the summer and it feeds our, and then the seeds feed their birds in the winter if you like birds. Um, they keep our ecosystem healthy. And I don't know if you've heard of rain gardens, but they, um, their root system helps filter water and it helps um, keep water out of our storm drains. They're very low maintenance, uh, less mowing reduces air pollution. Um, they, you can save money. They are perennials, they grow back each year. They need no herbicides and pesticides. They have deep roots, uh, which help filter out the pollutants. Like I said, it decreases soil compaction and they need less water due to their less roots, their long roots. They're beautiful. They, this is um, some of them, just a couple. They're easy to grow. I'm not a good gardener. My garden looks a lot better these days. But talking about deep roots, this is a, um, a graphic that shows on the left side, this um, over here, you can see the little bitty root system is your grass. And you might plant another type of plant. Your day lily is a little deeper, but look on the right. Look at those roots. They are cleaning toxins, soaking up water, doing what they were made to do in Michigan. And, and we do love Michigan and they love Michigan too. So they can go back down to 15 feet. I just, the benefits are unbelievable. 
So on another note, when I decided to start this, I decided to go through the city, through the mayor, and then, then our mayor had already signed the Mayor's Monarch Pledge. And your Mayor Barnett has also signed it as well, um, with a little encouragement from me. And um, it basically was created uh, in 2014 by the National Wildlife Federation to give cities and municipalities guidelines of 24 actions that can be taken to educate and help integrate uh, Michigan, your native plants. And that's not, I mean, we're Michigan, but each region obviously has their own native plants. There's the pledge. Um, why did you want, why did I choose a municipality? Is because they have jurisdiction over parks and community gardens and public land. Um, it's easier to, and it's more efficient and effective to educate and encourage people through a uh, city um, being with this being backed by the city. And when mayors and policymakers speak up, citizens notice. And so far, the city of Rochester has done 13 actions with our help. We have gotten so much um, res good response uh, from anyone, from so many walks of life. I would never have thought of the people that care and garden. And I could see, I had a sign, I have a pollinator sign in my office. <laughs> and one of my clients, I never would even thought, he goes, whoa, pollinators, you do that too? And I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> and um, so I, I, I've had um, businesses like Haig Jewelers and I see Vince. Vince has his pollinator garden. I think might have been, it was two things. He, he, he loves butterflies and it's saving money. You know, he's a bean counter. Uh, um, I hope he saved money because I last year, he did this two years ago and I, I did take a peek at his pollinator garden at, at, at the office and it looked beautiful. Um, Royal Park Hotel. Um, Vito Anthony Holmes. I worked with Oakland University students, uh, both uh, mayors I have, Mayor Rob Ray, um, Kim Russell, Mark Albrecht, I got them on board, lots of young people. Uh, just this last fall, we were planting plants at Heroes Point at the Rochester Fire Station. Um, I see Julianne here. We've been working with her in the Rochester Public Library. She's been kind enough to give her, give us one side of of the faces, um, was it East Street? Oh, what street it is? Town, Town Road, that we can have a demonstration garden. And um, she's been patient because uh, last year we were just starting it. This year it's gonna look even better this spring. We have a butterfly garden in the Rochester Municipal Park and we've put, uh, added an integrated um, um, in Michigan native plants in the bump outs on Main Street. And we've also worked with the Detroit Zoo. Um, uh, these are just some places that um, we're, we, we have created more relationships with. Um, some, what we have also become as a resource because we're, we, this, I didn't come up with this and I'm not, this isn't a new thing I found out. <laughs> there are so many people that knew about this and doing so much more than I was doing. And really, my hat's off to them. I'm just a, a megaphone and a marketing company. So of course we can maybe get it out faster, get the news out faster, bring people in quicker. But um, I have had the, the um, uh, honor of working with um, the Rochester Garden Club, um, Michigan Wildflower Association, um, Wild Ones, um, and uh, learning a lot from Michigan State University. Um, some, and um, there's a pollinator collaborative in Detroit I'm also um, having conversations with. So I don't know if many of you have seen it, but there is a demonstration garden that was created and, and installed in the Municipal Park in the summer of 2019. Um, it was going to be expanded last year, but we could, because of COVID, it was put on hold. Um, the pollinators got a thousand dollar grant from the Community Foundation, so we will be um, donating that to the expansion. So this year it should, this coming up year, it will be twice the size with a, a swing set. We, um, what do the pollinators do? Well, um, here's a sign that my company donated and we got the money to do it, uh, to pay for it. Um, but my company donates the design and we created a, an informational signage because a lot of people had a lot of questions. Of course, we want to teach and it will be installed in the spring at the garden uh, at the municipal park. It's gonna be three, two feet by three feet, three, 24 by, yeah. 
I told you about the flowers, the integration on Main Street, and it is integration. You, it's all, not all native, just want to say that. Um, here's Heroes Point. Um, here's our uh, chief of uh, fire chief and uh, Jane Giblin, who is an expert at this and has been helping me. And she's uh, just those, I couldn't have done this without her. Paul Haig planted some, uh, he planted some next to his business, like I said, and I told you about the others. Um, here's some of the gardens. I want on the left is, I don't know when this one is. I can't remember. On the right is Bev's garden for Frank uh, the Rewalds Royal Park. Uh, we worked with Magna International to, um, with their volunteers. Uh, this is at the Rochester Hills Public Library. Here's uh, Stephanie Smith on the left. She um, is taking the lead. She's a volunteer uh, and a committee member. Uh, here's the City Beautiful Commission. It wasn't for them. I, I couldn't have gone. I couldn't have done this. They have embraced this. And the other thing on the left is a monarch butterfly. If you plant the plants, uh, especially the milkweed, this is not milkweed, but if you plant milkweed, they will come. I, I live on a busy street on a university and they, and they do come. We have Mayor Rob Ray. Uh, he came the first year. He was very excited. He planted his garden. Um, and on the right, we have Mark Albrecht who purchased a sign and there's some, of, there's, uh, some um, uh, native plants in, in his garden as well. Uh, Mutri Pollinator Garden. Um, it is, uh, I presented to the Paint Creek Trailways and they, uh, Louis Cario, uh, they now have a, a demonstration or pollinator garden on the Paint Creek Trail behind Kings Cove. And it's been, people have been enjoying it now for a year and they're expanding next year. So basically my convincing thing is it's low cost. If you sometimes it's no additional cost, just buy the Michigan natives instead of the other types of plants and, and plant them. Um, it's something we can all do. Um, uh, I found out that during the pandemic, I told, I sold and gave away more plants than I ever have our team, I mean, our pollinators mean I, Imperial, we <laughs> have done a lot of work and sold and sold thousands of dollars of worth and give thousands and over a thousand milkweed away as well as part of our mission. Uh, we do raise money uh, to keep um, uh, making this a sustainable uh, model with the city um, because I promised this, I did do, I made a promise. I said, I think I can make this sustainable and I have. Um, and so, um, uh, and I'm not convincing uh, people that they need that they're they're seeing less butterflies. I don't find very many people that hate butterflies. They're very bipartisan. It's not political. It's something that um, we can all do. Like I said, we you know like you know maybe if you care. I mean, you see things. You can't really go up to the Arctic and give uh, uh, the polar bear a fish, but can do this. And you can still do the other things. There's a lot of problems in the world. But when you think of doing this in your own backyard, I, it's really gotten, a, I've recruited a lot of people. Basically, what people ask me is, okay, where, what do I buy? And what do I plant? And so, well, we've got that answer. It's in our, and it's in our brochure. And we have our starter garden um, plan. And we have the 10 plants that we recommend you start with. We do a lot at the farmer's market. You'll see us there four times a year or five, but so far it's been four. Here's Christy Trevorrow and her daughter and they picked up their free milkweed. This has been a couple of years ago. Um, and uh, we've, done, we've done a lot uh, uh, and made a lot of headway in, in our education and plant giveaway and sales. We get a lot of volunteers. Here's my neighbor. <laughs> like I said, you can't get within like 10 feet of me without getting a milkweed or something. <laughs> Something's gonna change. <laughs> um, so we give away a free t-shirt and uh, that's my neighbor modeling her free t-shirt after she volunteered at the farmer's market. Our youngest volunteer is on the left, uh, Stephen. He's wonderful. He, um, he even helps me uh, with um, my, um, uh, uh, stripe on my iPad um, or square, I mean square with charge cards. He's helped me there. And the one, the little the guy on uh, the little young man on the left has volunteered quite a quite a few times. And it also gives these young people opportunity to get involved in the community wherever Dave Walker is. He would attest to that. I start him young, Dave. David said he didn't start until like what do you say, ten years ago. I start him at like age eight. <laughs> community involvement, good thing. Um, so our accomplishments for, we have uh, sold over 
6,000 native plants and given away over 1,000 or more milkweed plants. We have over 13 partnerships and counting. Six businesses, I haven't really focused on that much, are participating. Um, we've um, integrated as many plants into our city landscapes as we can. Um, we have three demonstration gardens in the city now. Uh, we have social media engagement, website traffic. I even got on channel news. I couldn't have done that without Nick Banda. Um, we have weekend events and many presentations like this one. We give away, we've given away seeds, 174 uh, seed, German seed germination demonstrations, email signups and things in brochure giveaways and on and on. Many volunteers, people love to volunteer. We have our swag at Etsy and at Busy Buzz and buying that helps us um, continue to uh, uh, do our mission um, and uh, pay for uh, things like that because it's 100% volunteer run. No one gets paid. <laughs> um, and uh, we sell steeds and shirts and bags. And, and um, here's a, we, uh, on the right, you can see it. It's a, it's a lapel pin, a Mount Monarch. Um, we have a pollinator sign. If you uh, join the club and uh, you check off your boxes, you can uh, buy one of our pollinator signs. Um, and what are we gonna do next? We are going to expand the municipal park garden. We're gonna install the informational signage, which I told you, we're gonna to continue to increase awareness. We're gonna give more presentations. We're going to expand more information on the city website because we already have uh, a city website, which is, uh, it's here at the end of this presentation. And we're also working with Oakland County because they're gonna have a giveaway of native plants at a much larger scale than I have. And they're following my business model, we call it my giveaway model, at, through farmer's markets. They already had done that. So on a larger scale, how can that, what does this have to do with, uh, you know, how can we expand this even more and what would the benefits be? Well, Tennessee and Ohio have planted over hundred, and Ohio has planted over 120 wildflower fields and they do this along the highways. So that decreases mowing and increases money to, um, to fix our roads. So uh, I haven't gotten to the state yet. I got to Oakland County though, I'm on my way. It's a step, it's a step process. And even at the federal level, they're, they're, trying, to, uh, they're trying to promote this and they have, and once I get there, I'll, I'll let, you'll know. You'll see me at the Capitol steps with my little pollinator sign. Um, so uh, collectively, individual actions can make a difference. Um, we all depend on our natural world around us for survival, in my opinion. Um, like I said, it's solvable. It's easy. Plant milkweed and native plants. The milkweed is the host plant, I said, for the, for the monarch butterfly, but there are host plants for the tar tiger swallowtail, such as fennel or dill or parsley. Um, if, you save the if you save the monarch, you can save the rest of the pollinators. And I you can have lots of lovely pollinator conversations. And I think that some people, you, we need that now. <laughs> um, here's all of this. Uh, I guess the main thing is you can visit our website at rochestermi.org slash pollinators to learn more. You can like us on Facebook. You can donate to the city, you know, Rochester Butterfly Pledge. But you can volunteer. Um, you know, you can share any stories with us. We love to chat. Um, and we have places that you can buy them. Uh, we, we, you have to get the real Michigan native. There are fakes out there. They're called cultivars. And so they don't, they're sort of, they're kind of pretend. You have to be careful when you buy the plants. There is unfortunately neonectoids in these plants that kill insects that they are bred into the, to the plant. And I'm not picking on anybody, but big box stores, you have to be careful to make sure you're not buying insecticides in, in these plants. We get our plants from wild type from Mason. We drive, we drive two hours to get them and two hours back to make sure what we have at the farmer's market is a real genotype. So you want to, if you want the starter garden brochure, you can go to the website or email me at, um, do I have it here? Uh, pollinators at trentcreative.com. Um, there's also a butterfly called the skipperling butterfly that is going extinct in Michigan. If you want to learn about that, that's at nohlc.org. Um, if you want some free milkweed seeds, I will uh, mail them to you and you can plant them now 
uh, they love they need to be stratified because that's the uh, process that is what makes them pollen perennials. They need to be they need to freeze before they'll grow. That's how it works. We're all Michiganders, right? Well, the plants are too. So you got to freeze them first, and then they'll thaw in the spring and they'll sprout. So they're not weeds. And they're really pretty and you don't have to make it look like a free flowing garden. You can control it. And you know, if you like to control things, you can control this. And we are, and then the, the, the bottom line is there is, uh, people are making a difference and there have been more sightings and each year uh, they haven't declined more in Mexico. They have gone up, you, they can, the reason they can tell how many monarchs are, you know, they can measure that better. If you, you probably extrapolate that they can count the acreage in Mexico. So that is why they can use this as the poster butterfly and the canary in the mine. So there you go. <laughs> Thank Marilyn, you. That is, that is awesome. We've had quite a few uh, uh, people asking questions. Okay. Um, I didn't, I, I didn't uh, see the chat. See. I gotta get over to the chat. Where am I? Here we hmm. go. Uh, uh, Linda Lundy says, check out IMAX Butterfly Film if you've ever get a chance. It's 3D. It's awesome. Vince okay. says uh, he planted a pollinator garden a few years ago with Marilyn's help. Uh, flowering each year and the plants make patio look great. Uh -huh. he's, he's, thanking, he's thanking you. Uh, oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Vince. <laughs> Linda Lundy's asking, would Bordines have a list of the good Michigan native plants for backyards? Uh, that's what I was going to say. Tell, ask, call your local nursery and ask for this so that they'll know that there's a need um, because they can go up and down on, you know, they, they, if you're the consumer asking for this, um, they should have a list and you can ask for the real genotype, not the cultivars like Wiegand's or uh, oh. Folger's. Yeah. Linda Eastman asked, uh, what about the rotary garden in our, at our rotary park? And I think a lot of those flowers are there already. Um, they, I think so. Okay. And Someone also, called me about that. Someone called me about that. And that's the other thing I forgot to say. What I'm going to start doing now, because we did pretty good last year. And um, I've been putting, we've been putting money back into the pledge. And I was going to come up with a grant program so that we could say, hey, we'll give out, a, we'll give you a hundred dollars worth, or we'll, we'll give you, you know, 30 plants or whatever, up to 30, and have people apply for it so we can give the plants to like the Rotary Garden. We gave some to the OPC. We gave some to the fire, uh, Rochester Fire um, uh, uh, House. Um, so yeah, we can, we can definitely, someone called me about wanting to add some more. I don't, I haven't, I don't know exactly what's in there, but it is a beautiful little garden. And Linda to... also asked how she would like to do one at her own home, a garden. And mm -hmm. uh, how could she get a list of plants, which you've given us that your website and so forth? Uh, um, if you could send me the email, I could just send her, uh, I can just, just send her the brochure and the list of plants. Because we have an expanded list of, of the Michigan natives. We have the brochure and we also have annuals that are nectar rich because I, you know, not all annuals are created equally. The day lily, I could do without forever. It has no nectar in it at all. And now I walk around going, I don't know if that's feeding anything. Like, you know, I'm kind of in charge now of everything. <laughs> I, I had a question. Um, you you see all over now that these um, sort of like bee houses where you can, they're, yeah. they're not bees that live in a hive. They're apparently bees that um, like bumblebees that live uh, on their own. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any of those kinds of um, boards up around town? They, I, I know I bought one and they have holes in them and that apparently they can burrow into the holes and make it through the winter or something. I don't know. No, and they're pollinators too, are they not? Bumblebees? Oh, absolutely. They're actually a better pollinator. But let me tell you a side story. This isn't being recorded, right? <laughs> 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 Only between you, me, and a bunch of fence posts out there and bee houses. Um, mentioning bees is, is really not 
um, wasn't real acceptable. So we went in through the butterfly. People have butterfly gardens and the bees, the bees show up, you know, but um, it was pretty much kiboshed uh, at the city level to because it frightens people. Um, so we uh, don't, we will, I was going to start maybe selling or you're, or giving plans away for bee houses at my next farmer's market because we've, uh, we, we're more accepted now, but uh, it is definitely the bees and the dragonflies and others mostly that are, that are better pollinators. The butterflies are kind of ancillary and they're kind of, you know, they're pretty, they don't have to work as hard. <laughs> I didn't say that, right? <laughs> Vince posted a, uh, a link to the Rochester Pollinator page uh, on our chat here. Um, that uh, word says, do all the plants need full sun? Um, most of them, uh, they can do partial there. We, we have um, some handouts that, uh, and I can email those or make them available to Tim or however you wanna just uh, uh, get these out to everyone, make them available. We have um, uh, icons that say if it's partial sun or full sun, there are not very many shade uh, pollinator plants, but there are a few. Um, so they usually are, they're full sun to partial sun. Yeah, Marilyn, go ahead and send them over to me and I'll, I'll just distribute them. I'll send them to the club. Okay. 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 Now, Linda Lundy asked, uh, could you please post your email, which I think you did, but post it again. Uh, uh, you got a lot of people saying awesome presentation along with me. So that was glad. that was great. Uh, <laughs> Elena Campbell Thank says she needs milkweed <laughs> seeds, which I'm, I want to be on that list also. I've got about an acre here and I've got, got several gardens. Uh, are they are the plants deer resistant? Okay, I've got I've got if if you got an acre, yeah. Well, okay, a lot of them are. They do like them at the tender side. If they can get tall enough, they are. They the the milkweed tend to be the least eaten because it is a poison. It, it's a that milk in that leaf is is a poisonous one. Uh, but they people they've told me deer will eat anything. Um, I don't have as much of a deer problem. I did, they actually did eat a few. They chomped on it a little bit, but they left enough for my coneflowers to grow. But there are more deer resistance than others. And then there's that Jane Giblin, who has a beautiful garden in Rochester Hills. She sprays something that's natural. And the other thing, the downside about the milkweed is aphids show up. I realize that they show up. Can't really do much except soak spray soap on them or, or ignore them, but aphids do show up. <laughs> uh, as, far as, as far as deer problems, uh, I've used it. It's a uh, deer and rabbit fence, which is basically coyote urine. Well, it's a spray and it stinks bad, but they also have it in the granule that lasts, oh. you know, a okay. couple of weeks, two, three weeks. Anyway, I put that around and the deer have been leaving my stuff alone. Well, that's good to know. We'll put that out in our newsletters. We do have a newsletter. If you want to be on it, um, you can sign up on their Facebook page or you can email pollinators at trentcreative.com and we will add you to that. So we add tips like that. That's good to know because we have so many questions about the deer and because um, they're hungry too. The <laughs> yeah. Christine Haig put out uh, Abiding Presence Lutheran Church planted a pollinator garden after hearing this presentation from Maryland. That's awesome. Renee yeah, Cartwright says, I thank you, Marilyn, and the pollinators for donating the plants to the OPC patio garden. Aw, you're welcome. Uh, we want to do more. Stuart says, great presentation, Marilyn. Uh, Julianne, we love our pollinator garden at the Rochester Hills Library and so grateful for the donation of the plants and volunteer time. Uh, Linda Lundy put her uh, email on there so you can send her something. Actually, if you can get send it to um, Tim, and Tim can forward it to everybody. Uh, Elena Campbell, we have a small garden space by our ice cream shop, and I'll, I'll plant milkweed. I definitely want to get milkweed seeds and milkweed plants. I'll plant them around. And then I, I'm one that loves cone flowers and black-eyed Susan, so I keep planting all different types of those. So that's oh, good, too. That's so cool. Well, listen. That's so great. No, we give away plants in the spring, as you know, and Oakland County is probably going to give up to ten or ten to twenty thousand dollars worth of starter kits. 
because I cre we created kits that we sell and that they are going to give away. So I was going to give that announcement out if, if for people that are interested to, to wherever they're giving or, or we might hopefully it'd be nice if we could distribute some for them as well. So we can get we are our newsletter and our Facebook page at pollinators. We give out as much information as we can to help people have a successful garden. Like, like I said, please get that to Tim because I'm interested in the starter kits also and probably a lot of the people in our club would be. Um, okay. That was, that was a That's great right. presentation, Marilyn. Unbelievable. Thank you. Yep. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you so much. I have one more thing. Whoever need, whoever has the acre, I can give you quite a few. I, can, I have like more than a little packet of, ro of, of milkweed seeds. That's what I, I harvest them for. So whoever okay. that is, let me... No, I'm, not. Well, I'm, I'm a landscaper, so I can help spread the word too. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. We love landscapers. Anything that we can do to, to help you. And also, we have people asking for landscapers that know that will plant Michigan native plants. So I we were trying to create a list of those. <laughs> Put me on a list. All right. Well, send me the info. All we'll right. Do it. I will. I'll, I'll have your, your info so I can get info to you. Anybody else have any comments? Before we cut off, I hate to cut it off. This was a great presentation. Well, thank you so much. That's what I said. I have the best pollinator conversations and it makes my day instead of all the other things that are, you know, going around. It sort of lifts you up a little. <laughs> Matt Werner says, so interesting. Great presentation. I'll go along with that also. And I'm sure everybody else is too. Thank you for okay, your well, time, Marilyn. Like this big now, so thanks so much. You guys were a great audience. It was a lot to take in. Thank you. Thank you. And anything Thank I can you. do, let me know. Anybody um, got anything else before we close out? All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great week. You take care, and I'll talk to you next time.